So let's talk about the adductor muscles. There are five adductor muscles we're going to go over. Two on the superficial level, the, basically the adductor longus, one up near the groin, which is the pectineus. Underneath, the adductor longus is the brevis. Then we have the gracilis on the inside of the leg. And one that actually fits in between is kind of like sitting between two sheets. It's the adductor magnus hamstrings on the posterior and the adductor muscles on top of it. So let's start out with the adductor longus. This is the most predominant adductor in the thigh. It's quite easy to find actually. So what you're going to do is have the patient lay on the table and you're going to have the knee over top of the edge here. Now when we're actually going to try and find out where this muscle is, it's extremely important that we actually muscle test here so we find that the adductor longus actually pops out of the thigh. So the muscle runs from the pubis and then it basically goes to the thigh here. It wraps around the posterior to an area called the linea aspera. Now, let's just have you, Mickey, basically take your hand and put it on your pubis right here first. Always have the patient go there. Make sure that you get permission to actually palpate the area. So what I'm going to get you to do, Mickey, is actually take your leg here and push it in towards the inside. Good, perfect. Now I'm just going to bring my hand here and actually use the pads of my fingers and kind of get in here and show me. Push in. Not quite there yet. Push again. Feel that right there? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, it kind of jumps out underneath the pads of your fingers. We have a lot of tactile sensitivity on the pads of our fingers, so it's an easy way to palpate. Now, it's important to know in terms of anatomically that this muscle, as it runs over here, right underneath it is going to be the adductor brevis, and above it will be the pectineus. So we're here palpating one more time, and just relax. Push again. Good. I'll work my way up here. Okay, doing it again. It's just popping right up underneath my finger. I really feel that, can't you? Sensitive. <laughs> yeah, I'll try not to push too hard there. Okay. So now let's consider the adductor brevis. We saw that the longus kind of pops up here. Move it in again. Okay. Good. And I can feel the tendon longus. Do you feel that pop coming up there a little bit? Coming yeah. again? Yeah. Good. Now, the adductor brevis is a little harder to palpate because it's directly under the longus. Now, we can go a little bit above there. Go ahead, there. And I'm just going to try and go in there a little bit and strum the fibers here. But it's a very sensitive area there. Now, this muscle here with the brevis, you may not actually be able to find it that easy because I said it's directly underneath the longus. You can kind of move in there a little bit, but you're going to have to work within patient uh, tolerance. And it's a very sensitive area. So the next muscle of the adductors we should go over is the pectineus. Now, this can be a very sensitive area. Why don't you touch the pubis there? And the lateral aspect of the pubis, kind of work your way up. Tight right there? Yeah. Sensitive? Okay. Now, just take your leg in there, adducted in. Good. That's popping up right there. Okay. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, if we look at how this actually runs down, we have the longus here. We have the brevis. Above that, we have the pectineus. Now, the pectineus will run down and it'll actually go past the lesser trochanter and insert posterior on the linea aspera. Push up again. Okay, just relax. I'm just going to try to go in the fibers. Okay, push up again. Good. Now, it's, it's really important to use muscle testing to define the location because quite often I'll see practitioners get on these structures or what they believe is the structure, but they're actually over a little bit. Now, anatomy varies a little bit between individuals. So even though you may look in a textbook and say, oh, this is exactly where it is, you're never really going to know until you muscle test. Another adductor we need to talk about is the gracilis. Now, this muscle is a little bit different, different because it crosses the knee joint. It goes right from the pubis, but it actually goes down and attaches onto the tibia. Now, to find this is actually quite easy. All we have to do First of all, let's find the longest. I'm going to have you actually bring your leg in, adduct, good, and relax. Now I'm going to drop off that a little bit immediately, but this will be the general area. But to really confirm that I'm on there, I'm going to have Mickey actually bring your knee into flexion. So you're going to try and go in here, and I'm going to resist the motion. Go ahead. There we go. You feeling that? Mm -hmm. Well, pretty sensitive, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Again, use the pads of your fingers and kind of strum it back and forth here. Bring it in. Good. Bring it in. Good and bring it in. Oh yeah, that just pops out right there. Now, we're not going to go too far up here. It actually goes to the inferior medial border of the pubis, but a very sensitive area here. So we're just going to kind of work up part way into there. One more time. Excellent. 
The final inductor we're going to talk about is the adductor magnus. This is the largest of the adductor group. Now, this will run from the ischium and actually insert back on the back of the leg on the linea aspera, but it also goes down and inserts actually on the epicondyle of the femur. It's a really interesting muscle in that you've got actually a compound muscle with part of it actually running vertically, and you've got a second section with the heads going in this direction, where the fibers run up diagonally. Now, the adductor magnus is quite often referred to as the fourth hamstring because it actually helps you to move into extension, but it also moves you into adduction. So, let's just go over a little bit of palpation. So, if we're going to palpate the adductor magnus, we kind of have to locate a few other structures here first. Let's go back to the leg here, and I think I'm going to have you pull in the leg. Right, good. Just against resistance. Now, an easy thing here is actually find the hamstring. So pull in. Okay, pull in again. There we go. You feel that right there? Mm -hmm. Now, let it go. I'm going to go up a little bit more from here. Pull in again. And this is going to be the gracilis. Feel that there? Yes. Now, I'm going to go in between these two structures here. Pull in again. There we go. There's a soft area here. Now, this is going to be the adductor magnus, but I have to confirm that this is actually the muscle. So I'm going to get you to push your thigh down against the table. So take your hip and push it down. Yeah, and that tightens it up. Just relax. Okay, and again. Okay, can you feel that right there? Yes. Now, just get in there and kind of go back and forth and kind of strum a little bit along here. There, you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty sensitive area. But the, the way you're going to locate this is not just go directly to it, but you can confirm where the hamstrings tendons are, where the gracilis is, Go in between there, as you go into flexion, those will tighten up, you'll feel the soft area, and then you're going to have the patient push down the table, and then that adductor magnus will pop up into your hand. A really easy way to find this structure. One of the things I really want to mention though, is when you're palpating the adductors, Especially when you start getting up in the proximal area up here, you're going to have the femoral artery, femoral nerve. You're going to have several structures here. If you start to, if you're palpating, you start to feel a bit of a pulse. Move aside a little bit, back off there. If the patient starts to experience kind of zinging down the leg, you're on a nerve, so you've got to back off. Just, just be careful, you know, where you're going, and get good communication and feedback with the patient because you're in a very, very sensitive area. And when you first start doing this and start palpating, have the patient actually locate the area and ask for permission to actually work in that area.